We are MDT. We design, test, and create precision rifle chassis and accessories to help you shoot better. At MDT, we really take pride in listening to our customers, and we have been watching your comments about our other recoil rig, our Pendulum one that we built originally. Um, there was some questions around how accurate that was for measuring recoil, and we really wanted to go and see for ourselves, because we were pretty confident in that design, that if we went and put it on a linear system, we were gonna see similar results. So what we're looking at doing today is taking different weights of bullets and running the same charge in them, and we went from uh, a bullet that is uh, 136 grains to one that is 153 and a half grains in a 6.5 Creed. Uh, we also do have some 120 grain uh, factory ammo that we're gonna try as well, but that might skew the results a little bit because of the uh, different load that I don't know what, what is in it. On the recoil rig, we can go and measure the linear travel of the gun that we have set up in the rig. And then we also do have a labrador set up to measure the speed of the bullet as well. So we should be able to take those two things, correlate how much recoil you're getting, to how much speed you have, to how heavy the actual bullet is as well. So it should be interesting to see what we get. So we're gonna start out with our lightest bullet here, a 120 grain ELDM from Hornady. This is the factory loaded ammo. Uh, we're gonna take measurements of the speed and how much recoil it has. Now we are running this test without a muzzle brake on it today, uh, just to try and get as much travel as possible to separate these rounds out. Okay, first round, stand by. Recoil distance of 335 millimeters. Average speed 2726 feet per second. A little slower than I expected for speed, but the recoil makes sense. So the first round we're gonna be doing for the loaded ammo is a 136 grain Lapua CNR L. Recoil distance 334.2 millimeters. Average speed of 2849 feet per second. Some good consistent speeds and recoil distance recordings. So the next round is not very much difference in weight. It's only 140 grain Burger uh, VLD Hunter. So it does have a different shape to it. Uh, so we'll see if the weight or the shape, I guess, uh, affect the recoil or if we can even tell. Average recoil distance, 339.45 millimeters. Average speed, 2814. About what I expected for drop in speed and for more recoil. Okay, next round up is a 143 Hornady ELDX. So, uh, same load as before, and we'll see what happens. Average recoil distance, 347.10. Average speed, 2,800 feet per second. A little less drop in speed this time, and same thing for the recoil distance, it's being a little bit longer. Okay, so the next one is a uh, 146 grain uh, VLD bullet. I actually don't know what the brand is on this. I've been collecting bullets for a long time and reloading, so just one of the ones I had in my collection that was a different weight. So we'll see how it does. Average recoil distance, 350.72 millimeters. 2787 feet per second. About the same drop in speed, but definitely not as much difference in recoil distance. Okay, so the last round we're gonna do is a uh, 153.5 uh, Burger uh, long range hybrid target. This is the heaviest bullet I have, um, and we'll see what happens. Average recoil distance, 372.14 millimeters. Average speed, 2754. This is the biggest difference in bullet weight, so definitely a bigger drop in speed and more recoil. We shot all the rounds to the recoil rig here. The one that's a kind of an outlier right now is the factory ammo, that's the 120 grain uh, ELDMs. So we're just gonna take that out of this test to show you the graphs. Interesting thing that we noticed, so uh, even with the speed going down uh, with each load, the recoil kept on increasing. So the distance that the gun was traveling rearward kept on increasing through the whole test here. Even though we are shooting a heavier bullet and losing speed, you'd think the recoil would stay the same because that speed is the difference in, in what we're seeing plus the weight of the bullet. But what's actually happening is that heavier bullet is causing more energy to be built up behind the bullet to push the bullet for one thing. And also that built up energy has to go someplace else, which is gonna go rearward. 
So we're losing speed because we're pushing a heavier bullet, but we're also building more pressure, which is causing more recoil. As you can see from this test, you're likely gonna be running some heavier recoil if you run a heavier bullet. Now, say you reload and you reduce your load down and reduce your speed down, you're likely gonna equal out at some point to those lighter bullets that you're having. This really gives you a lot of versatility to be able to run heavier BC bullets, maybe a little bit slower speed, and still get some very good downrange performance.